John Lilly once put it this way, there are no limits at all to the human mind whatsoever, except those we impose on ourselves because of our beliefs. And those limits are also beliefs to be transcended. And that's a view that suggests that the possibilities of human transformation are virtually infinite. That we have no way of knowing the outer horizon of what it means to be human. And really, to understand all this, everything, you have to go very, very deep in, into uh, a study of uh, history, consciousness, neurophysiology, everything. You have, to be, you have to be the supreme eclectic type of uh, leaning, and you really have to be wanting to know who you are and, and what everything is about. The thing that you'll find when you go to sacred sites, if you're very humble about it, is that you are on a personal journey and the sacred site will respond to you in a way that is appropriate only to you. The information is always what you are searching for. And it's the intent you give uh, that energy that defines whether it is used for right action or not. And it is inside these sacred spaces that you will be reminded that you are a god, that you are a bright star. So what you're trying to do is move through the course without ricocheting off walls or creating karma. You're trying to slide through things smoothly. How do you do that? It's called flowing. There is a technique that you can do that will allow you to touch some part of your inner being that has more knowledge than your conscious state does. Much of what we know of history is nothing more than a fabrication. Nothing is as it seems these days. And that is all by design, confusion and chaos. It's the way of the elites. It's the way George Orwell told us in 1984. Every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book has been rewritten. Every picture has been repainted. Every statue and street and building has been renamed. Every date has been altered, and that process is continuing day by day and minute by minute. History has stopped indeed. The history we have been taught is nothing but a fabricated narrative. And if you want to believe that narrative, that this is just a renovation of Stonehenge, Boy, do I have a sandbox in Florida to sell you. But the truth has a way of not staying buried forever, friends. Research the mud flood and fall of Tartaria and start to dig up our true past while you still can. Question everything. The history here is a riot. But it's also sad. And what's really sad is the little bit of it that has come down through what we call the Bible. And there's some little bits of it in the Koran and those kind of things. There's little bits here and there. But <clears throat> we get into the Atlantean conspiracy. I'm going to run down. We've mentioned some of these events as, we, as, uh, as went through the first part of that. These, this, this is going back a little bit further. Now, some of the Atlantean history is in Voyages, uh, Volume 2, as well, where it tells how Atlantis was first a large continent, and then certain things were done with the Illuminati races that created major implosions of their um, massive crystal pylon technologies. That ended up sinking portions of the land and literally sucking part of it down in the Phantom Matrix. Well, the reason I can't find a lot of it, like where is that continent? Because literally it demanifested through the grids and was pulled into the black hole system. So they're going to have a hard time finding all of Atlantis because part of it's down there. Now, Atlantis turned into an island community, large islands, and they were Lojas up in the northeast 
there was Brua, Atlantis, down in the south, a little bit west, and there was Nohasa. The whole Noah story came out of Nohasa, Atlantis, and the Illuminati race lines that were coming out of there. When we get into this history, we start to find out what the Exodus was about in the Bible. I know what's so sad. This is one of the, the things that I, I just feel so bad for the Jewish people, because they have been conned into believing that was them. It wasn't even a Jewish Exodus. It was the Hyksos Knights Templar Illuminati Leviathan races that were getting kicked out of Egypt by a competing force of draconian Illuminati races. It, the history here has been so twisted. So we're going to start to unravel that twist because these twists are in our memory banks on a race level, which means they're in our DNA as twisted codes. They're also in our radial bodies. The radial body is a part of our 15-dimensional anatomy that, you know how we've talked about hoover bodies, those you know, circles of energy around us, the three-dimensional uh, uh, egg-shaped spheres of energy around us. Well, around each one of those, there is there's something called a radial body. The radial body is created, it is formed of what are called meons and trion units. They are pre-light, pre pre-sound units. The radial body becomes very important. Planets have them too, universes have them, harmonic universes. The radial bodies hold the memory imprint of a person or a species or a planet. The distortions that we have now in our DNA template, thanks to the planetary grids, have totally distorted the natural pictures memory pictures, the digital coding that would give us our natural memory. That's why we don't remember any of it, and they've progressively been recoding it to match Nibiruan memory. So by the time we got in here, they got back in here, we would simply look at them and know them as if they were our creator gods. So this whole thing comes back to, if we learn this history, we see what's being done, we can unravel what was done. We can unravel it in our minds, but also in our gene codes, which means we're going to heal our radial bodies through bringing these frequencies of the true history records in. It'll help to heal the memory twists and the blank spots that are in our radial bodies. By doing that, we'll be able to run more frequency. And when we can understand what has been done here, that's the only way we're going to understand how we can fix it. How is a round table going to fix all this mess? And how is all this mess related to you know, what the pieces of it? How are they related? So we're going to find out about that as we progress through the history. We'll go from the history into the technologies that were used to do this and into what we can do to begin the process of healing it. Now, what's interesting is we've, where, where that reading left off, we've been given a lot more information since, since uh, last September. We will learn something about the 10,500 BC period that has to do directly with Philadelphia Experiment and Montauk Project. It has to do with wormholes. That becomes a very significant element of understanding the history and understanding what we have to do here. There's also another part of the information that was given in October, I believe, that has to do with APIN systems, which are Atlantean Pylon Implant Network systems. They're like microchip grids that are literally implanted all through our planetary grids and the planetary shields. And there are a whole bunch of competing ones that at this point, they are coming into activation and through the United Intruder Resistance, because everybody's putting their grids together to try to combat the Founders races and stop the Christos realignment. This is what we are literally being hit with. Frequency fence. We are in the middle of an attempt to create a global frequency fence at this point. The round table that we're doing here, and I had no idea until they gave it to you know, the, the rest of the security data to me this morning, has to do with making it very difficult for that to happen. Because if the world, if the planetary grids start to carry what's called a frequency fence more than they already have, it will stop the DNA activation that would normally be occurring in people, which means all the frequencies that are still coming in can't process through the DNA, so it'll make people sick progressively. But this is just seeding three history, and this is the history that'll wake up our DNA template and our tribal shield with its original D12 coding when we start to remember this and we start to see the sequence, feel the frequency sequence, and see the sequence of events. So we'll start right now with 50,000 BC after a whole bunch of other stuff took place. In 50,000 BC, there's something called the Lumerian Holocaust. Jehovah and Anunnaki and their Anu Melchizedek Orantia Illuminati humans infiltrate Lumerian Marhavi. They allow Dracos, which are Omicron Draconian plus human hybrids, all right, to infiltrate. And it culminates in the destruction of the Marhavi Pacific continent. There were, what was really funny is the Jehovah and Anunnaki they became the primary force here in the Lumerian areas. Now, the Lumerian area, what was called Lumeria, 
was a continent called Marahavi that was over in the Pacific. It was, small, it was smaller than Atlantis, and it was called like the Crescent Continent because it actually shaped like a crescent. These maps we'll see before too long where the original continents were and then where they became island nations. So this was taking place in what we now call Hawaii, technically, because Hawaii is what is left of the Lemurian continent. The Jehovah Anunnaki uh, were taking over and they allowed the Dracos to come in to try to help them, but then the Dracos tried to take them over. So the Jehovah and Anunnaki decided they wanted to be nice, and they tried to rally with the people of Atlantis and the Grail Lines and anybody they could get to help them to use the technologies to stop the Dracos. So they managed to get most of the Dracos trapped in underground tunnels. You know, there's underground tunnel systems all the way beneath the ocean floor, literally beneath the continent and you know, beneath what we call the ocean there now. <laughs> they used the crystal generators, which were massive crystal pylons, which are like, you know, building-sized crystals, and most of them are selenite, not just quartz, but selenite, because they run the frequencies better. They used those through the planetary grids, it's a scalar technology, scalar pulse technology, to try to seal them, seal the Dracos in to the, uh, the Lumerian caverns. But what happened instead was they miscalibrated and they, they blew up, literally blew up the center of the continent, its main grids, and it literally shattered some of it. It created a mess. And again, part of it went into reversal and it went into phantom. Now, phantom matrix, as we talked about yesterday, started way before any of this. The phantom matrix is what was created 250 million years ago during the, the uh, Elohim, Lear and Elohim Wars when Stargate 12, Universal Stargate 12, was originally blown up and part of this time matrix grid literally was put into a black hole subtime distortion system. So the phantom matrix has, this is where all these fallen angelics are coming from and it has a huge bearing on Earth history as well. We don't, we, they don't talk about it. In fact, they didn't introduce the concept, the full concept of phantom matrix until the most recent um, information that was given after October of last year. So we'll integrate that in as we go. But, they managed to blow up the grids in um, you know, what are now the Hawaiian Islands. That was the Lemurian Holocaust. In 28,000 BC, there was something called the Atlantean Holocaust. The Cirrusae, Jehovian, and Palladian, Nibiru, and Luciferian Anunnaki, and their animal Kizidek Illuminati humans, attempted to seize Inner Earth and Atlantis, culminating in cataclysm that reduced Atlant the Atlantic continent to three island nations, Brua, Nohasa, and Lohas. They are still visible. They're just renamed. So we have no idea. We're actually, you know, part of Atlantis. Atlantis is right. So what is left of it is sitting right in front of our faces. This one, Lohas, is England and Ireland. England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. They were all part of what was Lohas, Atlantis. Nohasa is now called the Bermuda Islands. Brua is what's left of the land around Sarasota, Florida. That went down into the Gulf of Mexico a little bit and down near where Cuba and those things are. These were all part once of the continent of Atlantis and we'll show you the maps in, in a little bit. So, same thing happened here. This story was hysterical. Each one of these has literally a story. I mean, it could be a book unto itself of how it all happened and that kind of thing. We have some of this story done and this gets into all sorts of fighting among the Illuminati races for who is going to dominate. It has to do with Toth and Enoch heavily. And there... It, it's not in this book, because again, this is going to be in the Forbidden History book, the one that has all the detail on the history. So this happened in 28,000 BC, so that's where we ended up with the Atlantean continent becoming an island nation. 25,500 BC, there's the Luciferian Rebellion that we talked about. The Nibiru and Marduk Anunnaki, they're Anunnaki plus Omicron Draconian, that's, the, that's what Marduk Anunnaki is. They're the Anunnaki races plus, it's a hybrid, plus Omicron Draconian races. They seized control of Nibiru and the D4 Solar Gate. They began Anunnaki race unity campaign. So it was all of a sudden they were trying to bring together all of the Anunnaki races into a dominion campaign. Let's all take the halls of them and take together, you know, the false unity thing. All right, now, okay. They tricked a bunch of the Atlantean Anumokizedek races into believing that they were doing a unity movement. Reminds you of anything happening today? They tricked them into it, and they were, you know, spaceships were coming and going at that point. There was lots of visitation, and many, many, even some of the human races got tricked into the deal. They actually thought the Anunnaki were entering Emerald Covenant and it was actually going to work out. What they did was they brought in a technology that was supposed to assist 
in restoring the grids more quickly. Now the founders races and the Maji Grail lines were telling the humans and the Anunnaki Leviathan races that weren't corrupted yet, don't do this, don't let them bring these in. It would have started Star Wars if they were tried to be, you know, if force was allowed to be used to stop them. If the founders came in or you know, sent some of their troops in with spaceships, they would have had Star Wars and the place would have rolled again. So it, that kind of intervention wasn't an option at that time. <laughs> this is where humanity is living a part of its karma because it allowed something to take place. It allowed a technology to be brought here that involved more pylon crystals, big ones that are like, you, look, you think of the Empire State Building, the size of that. Well, there were many pylon crystals that size and some of them bigger. These were massive instruments of running frequency and running scalar frequency. Well, they brought them in and they put a grid here and they put a grid in parallel Earth on coordinate locations. Where they put this grid was that the, uh, there's a, a frequency line or a, a ley line that runs between Q-side 11, that is in Ireland, and Stargate 11, that is in England. They put this right in the middle of that line so it could supposedly begin to draw energy from Stargate 11 to supposedly give them more power for their technologies. What it did was right at that point begin to reverse any currents that would come through Stargate 11 or through Q-site 11. So it would make Stargate 11, once it activated in a stellar activation cycle, it would make it um, activate on a reverse current, which would mean all the others would begin to spiral in reverse, which means the whole thing would get, the whole planet, the Merkaba would completely reverse and the planet would get taken down into the Phantom Matrix. This was the real reason they brought their nice technologies in and wanted to do a unity movement. So, yeah, nice people. <laughs> so, these guys, um, down here. During this period, there's a major period of setback for the Guardian races because right here was the stellar activation cycle they were all aiming for. That was the next one. Uh, there was one around 75,000 BC when they had the, the inner earth uh, rebellion and all that kind of stuff. Every time a Stargate cycle was due, it was war. Every time here. The ones that got passed over at least were more peaceful where the planet actually couldn't hold a stellar bridge grounding. But the ones that had any potential of having the gates open, it was always the fallen angelics raided trying to get a hold of a mente. So I think there was a, I'm not sure I'd have to do the math. There was, I know there was one that was tried or in a stellar activation cycle was going to go down in 75,000 something or other BC. But that got all hung up in the inner earth rebellion protecting the planet from you know, Anunnaki literally having had it at the surface for a long time. So these guys here were aiming for this time period. They were getting this grid installed. It was called the Nibiruan Dyadic Crystal Grid. It was a, se a series of 12 major pylons. 12 were put here and 12 were put on parallel Earth. And they were, what, <laughs> what the people here didn't know is that these were being linked frequency-wise. There was a link being made to the planet Nibiru through something called the Battlestar Nibiru, which was called Wormwood in the Bible. All right, the Battlestar Nibiru isn't a planet. It's a piece of a planet that was captured in Nibiru in orbit by the technologies they have, and it was turned into, literally, a battle planet. We're inside of it. It's like living quarters. It's like, like a, a little, um, it's like a, a planet, but on the inside of itself. So it's a, an artificially constructed thing, and it's bigger than Earth is. Nibiru is bigger than Earth is. There was this very, very elaborate setup of, t of technology done in order to let this Nibiru and grid work. They literally had to. Nibiru was already in an elliptical orbit, and it already had the battle star that had been done in seeding two. That was a mess that was left over from seeding two. What they were able to do was they were able to connect the battle star into this grid and progressively reverse part of Earth's Merkaba and make an artificial Merkaba link from the Earth's grid up through the solar gate that they had control of through reversing part of the solar Merkaba into the Wormwood uh, Battlestar Nibiru and then into the Nibiru matrix, the planetary matrix. Very, very sophisticated technology. And this is how they initially got full control over our planetary grids. At that point, if you block Universal Stargate 4, you can't get any information from the higher levels in because it all goes through that distortion matrix and gets intercepted. So this became a point where it was becoming very difficult 
for the founders races to have direct intervention without pushing it into complete founders war again where you'd have you know ships and merkabahs flying all over the place and light balls cruising through the universe and whoever was left when you know it was over with it, and that could that when that those things happen they have the potential to literally take this whole time matrix down so that type of activity on, on the part of the founders they will allow a lot of pushing to happen before they make a stand that would literally push back in that way because they know that if there's any possible way of peaceful resolution they will always take that way because they know every time those kind of wars are fought that it takes a chance of literally taking the whole matrix down so they won't it takes dire circumstances before that kind of stand would even be made now in this period of time the Niberian dot at crystal grid was set up and this was the beginning now this was set up at Stonehenge because Stonehenge, England, is, and this was like before the Standing Stones were there, all right? There, there were, throughout this history, this is another thing that was funny to, to actually like look at from above or, or read in a book after the fact. You know how the Ark of the Covenant, everybody's running around steal it from, stealing it from each other? So first it's over here, then it's over here, then it's over here. Well, Stonehenge was a funny story too, because when the first installment of these things were put in, in 25,500 BC, the Guardians did intervene, they pulled them out, and then the other guys put them back, and they pulled them out again. <laughs> and then, the, there was progressively, the political drama here was getting more and more Illuminati controlled. So, the, the final thing, that there, I think it was around 7,500 BC was the last one, where they stuck the standing stones in. The standing stones weren't just a calendar effect. What they were was, you would have one stone, one stone, and a capstone. Now, they got the major pylons out of the grids here, but they were not able to get them out of parallel Earth because parallel Earth was completely and totally under the control of various competing and fighting uh, fallen angelic races. They could still, even though the grids were taken out here, the Niberian original Niberian dotted crystal grid implants were taken out here, they could still transmit by changing the coding on the Niberian battle star that was sending the instructions, like computer instructions, down. They could change the coding just a little bit on the one on parallel and still send it up through our grids, even if the pylons weren't there to intercept it. They could send it up through our grids and literally run it through our planetary shields. So the standing stone arrangements came in at the point where the founders race or the guardian races I should say because the founders were up there trying to orchestrate all this but it was the guardian races in the middle dimensions that were the you know the ones that were kind of like the labor force they came in and they set up this 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 natural structure where by using these stones this stone setup where you had one two and then a cross piece you would the frequency would come through from the active grid in parallel. It would hit our grids there, because that's where the link connection was, right on that point that laid between the lines of uh, Qside 11 and Gate 11. It was the same on the other side. It, the frequency would come through, it would end up going up through one of the rocks, it would travel over the top bar, down through the other, and get sent back. So it wouldn't go circulating through the ley lines and the shields of the system. So then there was, of course, all these stupid little battles that took place. They had to do with knocking the top bars off. So they'd knock them off, they'd just put them back on, and knock them off, put them back on. And it's another one of those things you just look at and say, this is utterly ridiculous. You know, just like chasing the Ark of the Covenant box around. It's like, oh, come on. It's like a bad B-movie or something. You know? So this is where we got our beloved Stonehenge. And the la as we know, as we, if we can, you know, if we see the pictures now, there's not too many cross pieces left on it. And there's actually been things, more things put in it, and some of the originals were taken out. So that's not the original grid that the, found, like the, the Guardian races had put in. Some of them are still Guardian ones. Others were put in to redirect it back into our grids. So we've been in grid wars here ever since this period of time, actually before, but it really started to heat up here. 22,326 BC. See, this apparatus was supposed to have this be the grand finale. This is where, in this stellar activation cycle, this is where the fallen angelics were very convinced they had so much control here that they were going to take the halls of Amente. Earth would go on a pole shift, they didn't care, to get pulled down in to Phantom Matrix, it would end up as a satellite of Nibiru in Phantom Matrix. Like a satellite planet, it would get caught in Nibiru's orbit, but they would get control of inner Earth as well and the halls of Amente stargates and then continue their quest up literally through the whole universal structure in this, in this time matrix.
Hey guys, Andre Hodge, 7 of Truth, Infinite Potential Healing with you once more. And in a bit of a maximum Bradius, uh, John McLean mode. As I said, if you've uh, had a listen to the recent uh, Earth Mother Pranic Healing Part 6, where I went to ground quite a bit. Um, obviously a lot has happened. And I thought I'd, I'd do a video so you can see me be a bit more transparent. Um, because this, this video is going to be about my transparency and imparting something that's been very... Um, it's an interesting dynamic. Uh, if you've read the Infinite Potential... Soul Contract Revocation Version 2.1 that's that's out there. There's there's a, a transparency with encryption. So uh, if you anchor yourself in the 12D level, uh, if you've been thorough with the Ashiana stuff and realizing that uh, guardians and founder beings and stuff in the level that you operate at 12D, and then the, the negative phantom matrix stuff at the epitome, like they operate at eleven and a half D. So there's there's been teachings out there saying the limit of the bad is nine D and stuff, but they've created the gap um, for you to perceive that that's the limit when they're operating from a a safe space when our actual best defense is twelve D. So I feel my nature, I've actually been doing a lot like that without knowing it, and I'm sure a lot of you have been. So, so this will, this will be like a codex of my operation for a very long time. Why I've operated, how I have the discipline. Discipline is number one, all right? <laughs> you don't have discipline, um, you get yourself in trouble, and I know and bushes and stuff are there all the time, constantly. A lot of the people I've interacted with of relatively recent times, because I've been going at this for like 12 or 13 years, so last five or so years of what's gone on. I've got birds doing a bird bath in a, in a gutter above me, and they're, they're having a pool party, and it's all splashing down on me. Interesting. Thank you, buddies. Um, but the way I've always operated is being transparent, right? Because my transparency is a discernment, right? And the reason for the discernment is um, if you watch the video that I'll, I'll put a link in below that I released and I've sort of had it hidden, but it's been on my discern me page about what happened with Galactic uh, History 2.0. And I had talked about my intent from the Lionsgate 2019 was to get to Europe and I worked out the strategy of that Lionsgate that I could possibly get to Europe in January 2020. Um, I've said I've had a, a focus and a mission and it's been for a very long time. And with the recent events, I've, I've, I've operated in a very transparent way to discern people if they're a part of that mission, all right? So I've operated with a lot of very, very aware beings and stuff. So I say I wear my victories under my psychic sleeve and stuff. Well, I also, it's there to be the perceived, all right? This, what I'm talking about. Um, and it's relating to something called the Ermine Soul, all right? And... I've only mentioned it to a couple of people. And there, there's someone in Europe that I haven't interacted with for a couple of years. And I'll just put this out. Uh, I probably haven't had enough security in what I do. But if they are wanting to reach out to me, just keep a look on my Access to Me page. I might have an email address that's a bit more secure. And those of you that need security, uh, keep an eye out. I might, I'm going to look to set up a Proton, Proton account that's encrypted and stuff. To me, there's nothing in this reality that's encrypted that can't be read and stuff. But if you need that security, 
uh, I'm going to create an option. I don't interact by emails, right? And I've just I've I've repeatedly said my boundaries. What happens with me if someone emails me? Everything that they've got going on uh, comes through, and all the entanglements where they get their perspectives from. All these people brought in, and I'm clearing everyone and stuff. So I've 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 asked for sort of my boundaries to be respected if, and um, I'm a bit weird because of this, it, it's not a victimhood sensitivity, I'm just tired of clearing people for free and then they don't value it and then they go back and get themselves fucked up and think that they're friends and all that sort of stuff. I'm professional, this is, this is serious shit, alright? What's going on in Europe and stuff is epic and it's related to that and that's why I'm offering this now because of what's happened in recent, the recent month and stuff. Um, I've held on to this, this mission for over six years and by me being the single point of failure, not offering it and not sharing it, uh, it's, I'm a vulnerability for the potential because I don't share it. But I, what I've said is I've deliberately operated in a very pure, I've raised my bar very high, I've created my own freaking modality that I do a lot and I've done a lot of healing on myself recently as I always do, and actually having that break of not being accessible and shutting down. I wasn't even accessible to uh, Captain Marvel and stuff, and she's got hammered as well with what's gone on. So if you listen back to that uh, Earth Pranic Healing number six, it's there's a lot of information off of there what was going on, but I was, I, I was sleeping like, I don't know, 14 hours a day, having three or four sleeps. I'd, get knocked out and go to sleep so I know I was doing dream time defense of the region and it was weeks before uh, what happened on the 8th of September and yeah everything is in that video if you want to go and um, but what what I worked out is Stonehenge was at play and I knew that and I'd done a lot uh, relative to that and I I'm I'm not sure what clips I'll show at the start and back and during this video but um, I've been struggling to focus on doing the video and editing to find the clips <laughs> I've been out there so I've been very isolated and meditative and stuff but but getting to impart this is very important for me because what I want to do is flip the fuckery and the targeting and all the bullshit because uh, I've kept this card as I've tried to describe this card has been in me I've had it transparent to be read. I don't. I don't. I've offered all the variables of me and all the failures and my mechanics for using empathy sonar. And so I've always had this ermine soul variable to be read, all right, to discern the people that are up for it, all right. And no one's been able to read it and stuff. And so. The reason why I'm flipping it now is that I worked out that the Omen Soul is related to the metaphor and avatar of the Tree of Souls, alright? So if you watch Avatar and there's this gravitation to the Tree of Souls, um, there's Bird, come and join the party. Um, see that there's a connection to the trees and stuff, so... So you're having the Ashiana information, right? This is the other thing, okay? Related to grid work and all that sort of stuff. I've operated, like, in a very disciplined line for all these six years, right? And I'm going to tell you the origin of where I worked this out because that's why Galactic History 2 was so freaking devastating to me, right? what happened with that and um, so say if there's a potential in the future of getting this done so I am like what do I need to do to achieve that what do I need like my I'm not limited by um, like the blinkers that horses might have that this is the only option that I'm flexible if I'm not up for it or whatever and stuff, but it's a potential and it's in the back of my mind. But as I said, it's it's been in my energy field to read. And so those that are here to sort of do it and step up, 
um, can perceive it. But the consistent thing is that I'm putting people back together, turning their lives around, and no offence to anyone in that, but I just get fucked up. And then what happens is people can't wait to fucking put money into their accounts for fucking me up. And by me sharing this, I'm hoping to flip that all, right? Because it's no one's fault. We're all playing catch up. We've all been messed with, if you've been thorough with this Echo series. So this is Echoes Part 8. Uh, M and Soul, the Avatar Tree of Souls, and uh, some, whatever I, I, I put into this. Because I was, I was brewing to do an Echoes Part 8 specifically about Stonehenge. Right? And... I might get in detailed about Stonehenge another time, um, but I in if you watch that um, the Earth Planet Killing Part Six, to me there's no real single point of failure. Right, so I just I'm just going to show you this quick image that I drew. First of all, I'll just show you this. All right, so I've shown this image before, but I just drew something because if you paid attention to that. Earth Planet Killing Park 6, then what I was perceiving is a lot of the shit was coming through from the Phantom Matrix to try and um, instill a new program with the new Sovereign. Um, all right. And what I was getting is the Death Star. I used the metaphor of the whole journey of me discovering Ashiana, sharing it all to all these people, all these clients and stuff, clearing them all, making sure they're clear. And people gravitate to the people that frack me up and operating with Metatron and stuff, alright, and this is no offence to Angela and stuff, in part three of the, inf to infinity and beyond, I'm pretty sure at the end she said, um, she talked about, wanted to talk about blanks, blank slate technology and working with that, alright, and I'll share the clip of Ashiana with blank slate technology here, alright. See, listen, it's all about pulling Earth into the Phantom Matrix, alright? Right now, we're sitting in a place that a very sacred covenant was made. It was a covenant that was made here, and then the, those who made it ran. Because, because they were chased. Because somebody took over what was put here. And it wasn't meant to be. The whole Delphi legends came out of something called a, a technology called the eyes. Now, I talked about the emerald eyes of Ionia. The eye technologies are something we're going to talk about more in the Metatronic workshop. But the eyes are polarization and refraction lenses. These are technologies, crystal technologies, not some mumbo-jumbo psychic stuff. These are crystal technologies that are physically based crystal technologies. If you can picture an eye as a lens that if light or frequency comes in, it bends it in different ways. It sends it somewhere. Lenses do something. We have glasses that bend light so our eyes can see better. There are lenses that can do all sorts of things. Lasers use lenses, all those kind of things. Well, these eyes that we talk about are a series of lenses that were placed on this planet. The first set of lenses were not placed here by guardian races. The second set of lenses were placed here by guardian races to counteract the effects of the first ones in case they activated. The placement of these things called the eyes began in 22,326 BC when the stellar activation cycle then crashed because it was stopped. So the fallen angelics didn't pull this whole planet into a black hole during that thing, during that mess, the, the war that was taking place in that time. The first set of eyes you can call them the eyes of Metatron for now, and we'll get into their specific names, were set up in the planetary grids, and they were part of a technology called the Beast. Now, the Beast is an interesting kind of... <laughs> it's been referred to as the, as the Beast in the Bible, but it's also Beast meaning blank slate technology. <laughs> okay, blank slate technology, and you put a few little words in there, you get Beast out of it. But the BST, the blank slate technology, was meant to literally rip this planetary system, and not just this system, 11 dimensions of our 15-dimensional time matrix. It's like taking the core out of an egg, I mean the yolk out of an egg. They were intending to literally rip 
15 to 12 dimensions, <laughs> I can't talk, 11 dimensions of our time matrix, including Earth, down into what is called the Wiesedek matrix, black hole system. A black hole system is an imploding system that has to feed on other energy sources or it will implode upon itself because it's no longer connected to its natural life force currents that flow from the Christos level and beyond. All right, we are in the middle of a situation where we're sitting on a bunch of lenses. It's like sitting on a bunch of time bombs that were put in here in Atlantis. Now, the Guardian races for a very long time here and throughout our work in the last several years have been trying very hard to not have what's happening right now take place. <laughs> the work we have been doing with round tables and the work we have been doing with running Christos frequency has been about trying to get the planetary grids to hold enough D12 frequency that the lenses, the fallen angelic lenses, eyes, couldn't activate. Because we were doing so well and we had got the planetary grids to such a high frequency level, the fallen angelics weren't planning to do their big nasty until 2011, 2011, right before the 2012 supposed opening of the Halls of Mente Stargates. They were going to activate the beast in 2011. That was their plan. Their plan wasn't going to make it because we had so much D12 frequency running in the grids they just weren't going to make it. So they activated it on March 23rd. Once the beast activates, it can't be deactivated. Now, if you look at the beast as a set of lenses, that were placed in this planet to, do a to make a mess of the planetary grids and to cause a real problem here. There was also the set of emerald eyes that were put in, in the same locations that the others were put in, in order to counteract what the negative ones would do. Now, the Guardian races have been trying to prevent activation of either set of them because just that, it, it's almost like a frequency fight in the planetary grids between these two lens systems. One is trying to literally reverse the whole frequency on the planet and take it down into a black hole spin, and the other is trying to hold it back up and split out the unnatural frequencies that are allowing that to happen. So it will create a stress on the planetary grids that was something the Guardians have been trying to avoid very much. There's going to be a stress on the planetary grids at this point. Now, the emerald eyes work in a way that if the metatronic eyes activate, the other ones will instantaneously kick in, the emeralds will instantaneously kick in activation with them. And then the fight begins, the frequency fight begins in the grids. It's not about people, it's about frequencies in the planetary grids. If there were no indigo races, indigo children races, or angelic human races left on the planet, the emerald eyes would work one way. But if there were still people left on the planet, still angelic humans left on the planet, and we ran the codes, they would work a different way. If there was nobody left on the planet, it wouldn't matter if the planet went into pole shift clearing this stuff. So they would just blast it through, and that would be that, and the place would spin, and then they'd rebalance it. Now, because there's people here, and there's still angelic humans here, what we do can make a big difference in how the emerald lenses behave. The emerald lenses can't be shut off either. They, they were tied into the technology of the metatronic lenses. But what we can do by working with the codes, this is why they're giving us the codes, the Ayaheya and the others we're going to be given, that have to do with the God world mathematical programs. They will be able to run enough frequency that we can counterbalance. And it's almost like slowing down what the emerald eyes will do and stretching it out so it balances in the grids rather than just whips through and clear stuff. Because you know? if it whips through, through and clear stuff, we'll have a Christos realignment mission really fast. But there's not going to be any left, anybody left on the planet to appreciate it. You know? so, so the work we're doing now, we have, they, because we're going into plan B, we've switched the focus into um, certain other types. We're still doing round tables, but more selectively. It's not how many we can get done right now that's most important. It's working with different techniques that they're teaching us now that are working with these higher VECA codes and what are called the ECHA codes that we're going to learn about when, in, in the workshops as we go along this time. See, listen, it's all about pulling Earth into the Phantom Matrix, all right? And it's no offense to her. I think she's taken on board some of the stuff that I've shared, and she's flipped and realized what she's done, and I don't see her as a bad person, but I get, um, I get ambushed by people, what they've inserted into people. So there's this movie called Fallen, 
like Denzel Washington, all right, from 1998, and I haven't rewatched it, but I remember when it came out, and if you used to get VHS sort of clips and stuff, I remember watching that video, and basically it's about this, he's a cop, and he, he puts someone away to, like, the death penalty and stuff, and what happens is this, this killer, he touches someone, and a soul essence transfers to all these people, and it's, it's like, Denzel's been multidimensionally targeted by this killer who's died, but he's transferred a variance of his soul essence to people, and, um, yeah, it's, that's what, that's what I have to be guarded about. People that have gone and interacted with the people, they've got dormant shit in them, and I know that they're in ambush, and I've had multiple people wanting to reach out for me of late that have interacted with certain people out there, and I know it's like an ambush, so... That's why my boundaries, I only interact with healing sessions because I don't really trust anyone else. I only recommend myself. If you've gone and interacted with anyone, my guard is up, all right? And don't expect to get in in any way because I've had the focus of this mission, all right? And if you think it's bullshit, that's cool. Like, I don't care. Uh, this video is about imparting that information so the people in the regions that might need it um, because it's going to be very tough to get to Europe from my perspective and I'm not sure what's going to happen with me, alright? So, what I was getting during um, that panic, the last sort of month or so, was there was a program insert from the other side of the Phantom Matrix overlaying on the region of Australia and Earth and stuff, and I didn't interact with Captain Marvel at all, but we caught up during the week, I did a couple of sessions on her to put her back together, but um, she was hit very hard and doing a lot in her own side of things and um, yeah things are different and so you felt the shift and stuff and it's just really really interesting so uh, I've kept my, I felt very very clear and I got a new baseline on me so I'm being very careful and interacting and stuff and it's really freaking epic. The game is on, right? So what I'm talk the reason why I'm bringing up Stonehenge and stuff is that while it is in the narrative where it is and all that, I don't think it's in the location of where it is. I'm pretty sure it's on um, Crown Land and stuff like that. And what I was getting, right? I'm going to show you another... So the source of the energy, the Phantom Matrix, there's a lot of effort to pull Earth fully into the Phantom Matrix, and we're all here basically to prevent that, right? And that's why things are crazy, because um, there's a huge bubbling up potential, and this is why I think Europe's a big target right now, particularly if you go to the Ermensel sort of thing in Germany and like Holland and all that region. To me, the reason why the Holland, like the Dutch farmers are being targeted are because the energy of this stuff is bubbling up in the land and they don't want people eating the food of it and stuff because uh, it's the seed of the EU sort of power. All right? So I'm going to show you another image. I just did this quick and it's really rough and stuff. And the whole... So that's sort of really rough view of the world, the Atlantic and sort of stuff. So me and all my journey... It's always felt like the Vatican is number one and stuff like that, right? US war with the banking and England with the banking system. So there's spirit, money and war. And it's interesting that there's banking over the other side of the Atlantic and stuff like that. This isn't a really good diagram. I just did it really quick. But say if Stonehenge is spewing out a lot of shit from Phantom Earth and what I was getting is um, those of you who have done history particularly like say Australia we're in a commonwealth and stuff how is it this tiny island dominated the whole planet right? and so over the last sort of month and stuff what I got was all the dark magicians and stuff they were tapping in to and, and discern the shit out of this right? they were tapping into the shit spewing out of the Phantom Matrix, Earth, through the portal, right? 
okay, and employing it to do all the negative spiritual warfare, because the British have been masters of it. If you look at the last five, six hundred years, so when the, um, they went from nothing to being this, like, during the John D era and stuff, so the whole British East India, Dutch East India, because um, my lineage comes from the Dutch, and I'm pretty sure I got Joshua 12 sort of stuff. There's probably a lot of people out there, if you've been, um, got those codes, then you've been fucking persecuted like no, no tomorrow. And that's why these code stealers, high level aware code stealers that draw in a lot of people and, and, um, hijack their DNA codes relative to the indigos and the, um, guardians and the uh, founder beings that don't have them themselves that are operating directly with the Metatron side of things um, that people gravitate to because they've got the sympathetic resonance to the falsehood going right and people that pay a lot of money to these people they can't believe they've been screwed over so they have to they have to align with their money because they don't want to admit that they were um, hijacked on that level and they gravitated to the falsehood sort of stuff right so um yeah my attitude it's more of a like a triangle that goes to this and then it's spewed out from there and a lot of what um that's where the origin of the control is but i've done in this drawing um in europe i've got this green dot where it's been quashed like x marks the spot sort of thing because Emperor Charlemagne, uh, the Emensor was sort of dealt with in, but I don't want to get into the specifics of it. I just want to put it as a focus, right? So, um, you'd see like the origin of the crushing came from the Vatican. And if you look at EU, right, it's been a long game of multi-dimensional domination chess to get that whole structure set up, right? For ironic, the time of the stellar activation cycle, right? Of the Stargates opening and stuff, right? So the reason why I, I drew this quick as well is that my attitude uh, to, to identify one spot, all right? And that's the single point of failure. I don't, I doubt that, all right? But I'll just use what we've got and I'll want you to be open to there's probably more spots like the red dots are probably phantom matrix portals. So to um, the phantom matrix earth and get all the shit spewing out, all right, like oil geysers, all right, of negativity to maintain control. And there's all probably spots, I'm, I've got them greened and marked around the world that have been hijacked and controlled and dominated, all right. But I'm just focusing on this one because I think it's very significant with what's going on in the destruction of Europe. Because the negative consequence on the humanity is energy harvest to imprint the earth to lock down the grid. Because obviously a lot of shit is bubbling up. The conflict is confirmation and the disorder and the chaos and the undermining of life uh, is to put people off balance to this, I feel. And so the reason why I'm imparting it now is that uh, I was aiming to get there in 2020 and do this. I had family in Holland with a place to stay and I've got a mate that's got a property in London that I was going to stay so it was going to be a lot cheaper. The EU to Aussie dollar is very expensive so it was going to be a lot of money for me to do. And this is the thing, all right? This is the true nature of grid work and stuff. So if you're all looking at books like, ooh, trying to find the wrong and shit and all this sort of stuff, right? This is the difference between when you, like, the metaphor is in Star Wars when Luke was going down to try and take up the Death Star and Obi-Wan said, trust the Force, Luke, right? And this is if you've been thorough with the Ashiana and she talks about security and only getting information. Like, I only put some of this together today. Um, so it's a security thing and getting it actually down is pretty epic, right? And to offer it, yeah, it's, um, 
it's a relief to get this out because then I'm not a single point of failure on the target and I've been targeted for six years plus all the time before because through time you can be perceived as a threat. Right? So if you look at the metaphor of why the Dutch farmers are being suppressed, uh, I feel it's like a lattice, like a network grid and stuff. Um, so if, if you go to Avatar and you look at the metaphor of the Tree of Souls where they connect to it at the end, the secret tree right and it's all hey buddy and it's all i've got a little starling very close to me <laughs> um there's all this um authentic grid of energy underlying everything that connects all people to it so there's a symbiotic relationship to it so i i recommend just going and looking doing a testing out your keyboard ninja skills and going look for the Ermin soul, all right? And then Prashalamane and all that sort of era, what went on, all right? So, yeah, I just wanted to give you that metaphor of that and refocus it and what is, from my perspective, going on. So there's a lot of information. I was going to be a bit more specific in that, but I'm just giving you the overall because what I want to get to is... Um, Ashiana's concepts and her teachings are a pivotal part to the comprehension of the why, right? So I'm not going to get into too much detail. I'm just going to give you some variables. Because um, I haven't really done the research and all the epic defences, say, the land of Australia and all the responsibility I've had with that for the last month and stuff. Um... I'm still pretty out there and I'm on my game and I've shifted a lot. I got a lot of upgrades. I worked out a lot. I worked out the ability to isolate the AI programs and stuff versus the individuals. And the AIs are just very, as the birds have a bath above me. Um, I'm getting rained on by birth bath. <laughs> um, thank you for the blessings for the birds. So it's quite late in the Roman em if it's not even the Roman Empire, but it's Rome's dominance, like the 8th century sort of stuff. Um, Say so with Stonehenge, it's not about the loot. It's not about... Uh, the. How can I describe this? The key with Stonehenge is the blocks above it to reflect the energy that we're coming back, all right? So if you go through English history and all the barbarianism and all the the Vikings and all that sort of stuff, that was all after this, right? But, like, there was Caesar trying to go to uh, England and there's a really cool TV show called Britannia that came out that ended pretty shit, but... And it was pretty disgusting, the third series, some of the shit that was going on. But, um... It was very cool. It's like more, and I'll use the word paganism, like the Celts and all the true um, indigos and guardians and magi and stuff that were spirit warriors and aligned with Earth and and the true expression of Earth in the universe versus the domination phantom matrix side. Stonehenge. Um, how, how many people here, hands up, have been to that wonderful site, Stonehenge? Oh, nearly the whole blooming audience. Excellent. Would you agree, agree, like you are now, that what you're looking at, to look at the person next to you, do you think they're solid? Do you think they're real? Okay, look at these stones. Oh, for photo. You can see straight behind them. Read if you can get translations of Tacitus, one of the recordists of the Romans invading the British Isles for Julius Caesar, they were scared to death of the Druids with good reason. Because these places and the Druids who knew about the, the legends and could wield the energy of these places could devastate the Romans on psychic and spiritual fronts because of what they were doing. That's why uh, they were chased all the way to Anglesey to be exterminated. 
the, uh, by the way, th this is not fiction, you can read it in the history books. And the recordings of Tacitus has said that they, they observed, uh, Ro uh, Roman soldiers observed Druids walking through solid stones. Walking through stones, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I didn't believe that fairy story, I thought, until I saw this. Here we have a vortex of energies that we photographed over the standing stones at uh, uh, Stonehenge. And by the way, the sun's not up there. This, these beams of light were somehow forming a pyramid of energy. The sun is way over here this morning. Listen, that's the noonday position. Those are not beams of light from the sun. They're from somewhere else, invisible. Then I switched to a different filter and then I saw the pyramid. Here we are. And it transects and goes into the stones. Anyone doing a, a research at Stonehenge, especially connected with Druid tradition, I hope they'll find this useful. Uh, and I will uh, share uh, certain pictures with them to prove any spiritual points they may have. And here we have vortices coming between stones, going up. And here we have this configuration, like, a, like an early um, physics cyclotron, like um, you know, a collider. But they knew about vortex and colliding energy long before the physicists of our modern day era. I think it's a real co- I haven't done the full England history and stuff, but if you take on board that Stonehenge and the control of the spewing out of the shit from the phantom earth and stuff like that and the domination of the surface that might be a very interesting decoding of all the shit that went on in England right, to gain control because then I said you look at the British Empire and how does this tiny freaking island control basically most of the civilized world right? and that's my code of understanding the significance of this that's where I'm saying it's, I might have shown this little clip and it's very rough, the editing and stuff, but I, it came across the other day, it's really cool. It's been moved from my perspective, it's not the location because it's, it's, it's not about the, whatever the narrative thinks, like celebrations and ceremonies and all that, it's about a defense of the planet over there from the domination and the location where it is. I'm saying it's probably on crown, crown land somewhere and you don't even know. It's been moved probably three or four times or whatever through history to obfuscate the actual location to source the, the dark essence, like the dark crystal, dark power uh, from the other side of the Phantom Matrix Earth and stuff. So I, this whole series, there's a lot of clips of Dashiana that have an overlay and I'm, I'm, I'm no doubt include a couple of clips and stuff. I haven't as I said, found all the Stonehenge stuff. But the key with the Ermin soul, right, is that true essence of indigos and the pagans they talk about. From when I read the pagans and stuff, I didn't I haven't really researched this for a lot of years, but I've got the 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 core variables that I haven't budged on, right? And so if you go through, those of you that have sent the audios through, and I might try and make them, I might make a page on my website that you can just download them and stuff because uh, there's a lot of effort to obfuscate the true Ashiana teachings and what I worked out, I went keyboard ninja as I said in the that, uh, chronic killing recently that I've done last weekend. Uh, I went keyboard ninja and I found the transcription of where she outed what Michael was doing, the abuse and him controlling all the money and she had to be in a safe house to out him and all this sort of stuff and as I said in that I, I've been in the creation and offering sort of side and it's tough all right, for all parties, not just me and that but um, this Ermansoul focus was the thing that's been the driving force of me for a very, very long time. So everything I've done, that's why I've been so dedicated and committed and not governed by money about the potential of humanity. All the videos I've created did that accelerate people because no one can perceive this. 
and it's just on me and I'm just, I, one of the thresholds of operating with people is if they could perceive it right? whether they were actually up to handling it and the pressure that I've been on and the targeting and the undermining since I awoke since 2008 right? so me imparting this is trying to flip all that and see what so people can't value me they value the people that fuck me up and shit so um, I'm changing my strategy here and I'm imparting it as I said to see what triggers in people and I've got my whale shirt on because I'm going to use my empathy sonar and um, the the putting it out there and we'll see what shakes out because I've got the all clear to sort of say it big time and it's been very I've had to get really fit this week after being very uh, not lazy but demanding in avatar mode so that's interesting like you know I said I've been sleeping 14 hours a week it's avatar is the metaphor right to be on the surface in the um, having a essence of the soul in the skin suit to be out of be in the game on the surface now so so the metaphor of what's happened if you have understand the Luciferian content there's three things I've said about Ashiana I got the corruption of the pure spiritual teachings so those that have the the contracts to share the teachings like the true uh, like galactic history bible sort of stuff and not the council of Nicaea sort of stuff that um, because people have this echo of the true teachings in their DNA uh, and knowingness of that so they're searching for the teachings and and the hijacking of the teachings and being seated because like I said in the other videos about the bubbling up of the spirituality it, it's um, relentless and it takes a lot of energy to suppress and stuff so the three main things are the suppression of the pure teachers and the targeting of them the industrial pillaging of people with the codes and stuff and then the creation of the skin suit using those codes to dominate the surface which we're in now right so the second part the pillaging so you imagine if you just do a scan of like WikiLeaks and all that sort of wiki wikipedia and stuff you get the sense of that pattern of the targeting and like when emperor charlemagne was going around and conquering all the the air to lock it down and that targeting of the Emensol I think that was a massive devastating blow on top of many cascading um, from the Babylon massacre and stuff like that that humanity have had to endure and stuff and so you see the targeting of Europe now like Germany Germany is going back to a third world freaking nation and the targeting of the farming in Holland to me there's a an energetic link to that whole Ermansol thing that's bubbling up that they actually want people off the land to be away not only that but the food the energy of the food is probably emanating this trying to break through the false grid right? and this is all the struggle of the money system the taking away the energy so the energy costs go up so people can't link up they're put into survival, so they can't um, bubble up the the genius that's dormant in them and stuff. So the suppression of food, suppression of energy, struggle, uh, uncertainty variable. Um, I was talking to Captain Marvel during this week, and um, very very. Um, if you've watched the recalibration shows, where I said you got to shrink your energy, and I've invited people to. To reduce the amount of um, what is issues in you uh, versus what you're perceiving because it's probably not you you're probably tuning into the collective I've had to even reduce it from five to two percent because what I've been getting is a lot of people wanting to check out suicide and stuff and I think there's there's programs being inserted into the collective to do that right so if, if you're out there and you're thinking about that, just take a step back, take a deep breath, 
I would eat a lot of protein, like have a big scrambled eggs, put a lot of salt in it, like Himalaya salt, because if you're dehydrated, uh, the water circuitry of your electricity and your energy could be down, so a lot of people get dehydrated, and it reduces the electrical throughput, say, of your brain and your uh, awareness areas and stuff. Have a big meal of protein, like maybe have half a dozen eggs, and go and have a slate. Anybody's craving probably protein and, and hydration and stuff and see how you feel the next day. And I strongly recommend doing my infinite potential soul contract revocation, ver at least version 2.1 that's on my access to me page. Just flip it. Because, because to me, I, I actually get targeted a lot to do that. <laughs> All right. And it's probably these scumbags that have been messing with me uh, it, it's not probably I know it is <laughs> right? but it's also AI programs and stuff like that that are sensing your potential on the other side of it and they go after you because that's where I was getting it this week and I was like oh you're not liking something I'm going to get and I actually got the avatar relationship just before it was like security so um, but there's a big huge uncertainty variable that's blowing up like a balloon underneath us and the volume of it is very um, interesting I'll just say that so have the courage to be thorough use the salt packs say on your spleen like I've said right? know where the spleen is and stuff have a big protein um, meal and then have a sleep on it and see how you feel the next day because uh, a lot of people are going to be malnourished and, and uh, I've done a couple of interviews on nourishment particularly vitamin K2, D3 and iodine and stuff and I can feel the glazed over sort of influence that goes on with people because I know the iodine and detoxing heavy metals has been a big variable with me and I've done that for 10 years um, but yeah I had to work out my own nutritional regime 10 years ago to be able to anchor this and hold it right? So yeah, just see that pattern of that region hijacked and dominated and then see like a lot of the um, like the Viking sort of era and the domination and the pillaging and stuff where probably all those really amazing people were flipped. Uh, the women were dominated, the men were killed. Uh, like negative Anunnaki or Draco sort of forces like plunder the women, industrial pillaging to get the codes. They bred the children with the codes to go out and do the stuff to get control of uh, Stonehenge and stuff like that. Just as one metaphor, but there's other regions, like I said. And what I was saying before, I um, like use the force, right? This is the big thing. This is why 10 years of healing makes a difference and being thorough and investing in healing and the key the key thing with me is while I charge money because I know the difference of like doing free healings it doesn't like paying for a session actually employs money to flip the money system if you're actually you can't be outside the money system all right you have to use what's there and use it against the system if you're paying for healing it will unravel all those DNA codes and stuff and, and free yours, right? So investing in that and people are going to be struggling with money. Who knows what the frick is going to happen and that's why I'm imparting this because uh, yeah, the fascinating thing is and this is no offence to anyone but it's the pattern that goes on because I know this, what I'm, I haven't shared. People gravitate to the people that mess me up and can't wait to actually reward them financially for doing that and it, it's it's a program out there that's preventing this resolution I know it so that's why I've decided and I felt the coast is clear now with what's happened in the recent months um, to actually impart this because maybe it's time to empower those people in the region like my whole strategy in one part of going from being someone doing a lot in the background and not really seeking notoriety to being public and doing my videos and my teachings is to accept how the 
the narrative reality is at the moment is that travel is very hard and so I'm imparting the wisdom that I've gained to be able to hold all this to be locked into it as a potential as maybe my life's purpose for 25 freaking thousand years sort of thing um, to train the people up and impart my what I've had to uncover to be able to hold this right and so I've imparted it and those people that are being dedicated with it um, it's it's accelerating their development and stuff so those uh, of you that have been very um, thorough with my stuff and included me in your journey I'm very great that's why I'm saying um, Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your journey because I know this polarity has been against me and I say I'm the last resort. It's People will go to everyone else but me because I know the financial resources are a very, very intricate part of it all. And so, yeah, it's, it's reverse matrix codes and all of that sort of shit, all right? So... I think there's a massive tie into this. So the Tree of Souls, it's really interesting. I haven't rewatched Avatar, but I've been very careful with that. Um, but I just want to offer, maybe go rewatch that movie, have this connection to the EU, of what's going on there, and you look at the the history of the EU and the the gradual chipping away to get the control, just in time to the stellar activation cycle. Um, it's very, very interesting, and um, there's so many variables at play. There's so the energy to invest in control. I'll show you this other image that I've shown this many times, and if you can see the colours, this is definitely at play for the control. So the craziness is harvesting from the. the unaware and it is, it's an interesting balance because to me while you think it's crazy you've got to step outside yourself and really appreciate all the variables at play the narrative is locked in all right and the, the nature of people is to gravitate to the familiar even if it's wrong all right very few people go to the unknown in uncertain times, they, they lock into the familiar and patterns. That's a really interesting dynamic of people, right? So there's a real escalation of the craziness, but it's actually stamping people back into the narrative to be controlled because the unknown is worse than the familiar. It's like an abusive relationship. If you've ever been in one, it takes a, you probably grind it down to nothing you don't have the will to change and you don't have the energy or resources or finances and stuff and uh, no one really people don't really you know you think people are good and that they'll get involved people don't want to get involved they they want to avoid that other people's shit all right so it's very interesting dynamic it's it's like that contrarian view and i've done that contrarian view show where i use the, the currency trading thing and i might show the image here because i it's getting dark and stuff, but um, it's going to get interesting. Right? So I'm just going to say how I got to the conclusion of this. Right? If you've been thorough, I've released Galactic Special Forces missions and stuff. And between one and two, two was the Vatican where we removed 700,000 sacrificed children's souls from that. We're all obviously all these people from that era, you know the indigos and stuff like that and capturing their souls and um, there's a recording I haven't found I may not ever find it was relative to the Bank of England to the banking system we disconnected it from the Vatican right? and it was related to the um, Rotherham sex scandal where 1600 women over 20 years were all brutalised, murdered or raped and stuff and it was the whole infrastructure was all in a land and we worked out Chatsworth House I think it's Chatsworth House which is big Dutch uh, British East India Manor like they were 
like Max Steel could see underneath and what they were doing and stuff like that. It's quite negative. But what it was doing was the negative energy was locking down a ley line that was going into and feeding the Bank of England sort of stuff, City of London and that. So I did two shows with Andrew in early, like March, end of May, June 2015. I were two with Natalie, Steve Travesty and him. And in one of the breaks. So I've had all these missions and stuff to talk about. They've never been brought up. Right? To me, knowing about that, what we did, is some of the greatest achievements of humanity in the fucking thousands of years. So I just thought, I I went passive. I gave my, my pet perception authority, thinking this is the best course of action. I also had other people say, oh, you can get targeted through time and all that sort of shit. And I believed them and... I'm here <laughs> and everyone else is in a different place and stuff but so what Andrew told me was there was a backup to like there was an energy ley line going from England that we disconnected from the Vatican and when we cleared the Vatican and he said there was a backup and it's in Europe so I'm just imparting all this and that's all that he said to me all right and so the me my my cogs get going and I realize this reality, this era of civilization has a big relationship between the Dutch and British East India corporations. They were two of the main corporations doing this stuff. So to me, now that the Stonehenge was used by the British East India Company to establish all that, blah, 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 the Dutch East India probably was using the... Um, Ermin soul that has flipped and used as probably a portal to go over to the Phantom Earth sort of stuff, right? And they were using that to harvest. Did a show on pirates with Andrew and he was talking about the sacred woods and all that sort of stuff. So they were used to create all the ships, magical wood to carve the oceans up and stuff like that. So it all has a relationship to all this in my opinion. Right? So, so when he told me that it was like I worked out Dutch East India building in, in Holland. There's the World Court in, in there and The Hague is an interesting place because all these business corporations have their head office there. There's different laws there. So I remember back, I don't know, 10, 20 years ago, there's this company called James Hardy and it's an industrial company here in Australia. It's big name and stuff. And they, I don't know, 50 years ago, they were using a lot of asbestos products and there was this big legal who you hire about victims that had cancer from asbestos and the CEO moved the head office from Australia to that region because the laws were different and stuff. It's just really interesting. But so I worked out the M and so not long after that. So twenty fifteen. And so twenty fifteen if you've if you've looked to the went to Ayers Rock with Nikki, cleared that uh, Christmas twenty fifteen did a lot of missions. She went in the Galactic Special Forces. There's a lot of write-ups of sort of what we did. She went to like Kathmandu, went after the earthquake to clear all that, all the death and stuff like that. Uh, she came actually here and did ceremony in the sacred site that I said that I sort of guard and uh, are aligned to. I'm not sort of really aligned with her anymore and stuff and we'll see what happens. Uh, the early infinite to infinity and beyond she was sleeping a car had nothing and I've given her a couple of chances to be grateful for all the shit and she's been like all these people I flip their lives are all messed up and I flip them and turn their life around and um, I'm like the Cinderella because when you change someone's position from there to there there's the energy cost and I usually have the energy cost of transmuting their fucked up situation to good and someone has to pay. There's a balance. There's energy exchange. And so when people's lives change, someone else has the cost, right? That's why I said back in 2011, I saved someone else's life. And that made me go bankrupt because they weren't meant to be here. And so there's a, there's a balance, all right? And I'm the one that's paid all the price. And I've had all this mission to do. And everyone else can't wait to value all the people that fucked me up. It's really fascinating. Can't wait to put money in. They, they talk a game, but what they do is what they do, right? And I'm not 
singling anyone out and stuff. I'm just, if you've had that threshold of this or that way, tune into why you went that way, all right? And see, oh, fuck, there's something inserted to maybe sabotage Andre and my potential, all right? That could be the variable at play and there's an external. So just do that really self-assessment, meditate on it and stuff. So 2015, I saw myself as a golden child in my mother's womb and stuff. And I saw all the freaking shit waiting for me and I didn't want to come. Uh, my mum had to have a cesarean. I was a week late on my birth and stuff like that. I uh, had a lot of realizations and going through. Uh, but I hadn't accepted my perception authority and stuff like that. I've always had this variable of my principles of existence. My very first one is how am I wrong in this moment? So I'm open to more information and I don't assume I know everything. People that say they see everything in that, there's usually a massive, <laughs> you get a massive slap for that. <laughs> so I'm very respectful for the vastness of what we don't know. Um, so yeah. Um, then uh, my brother was involved with this demonic portal sort of thing and I was guarding him, trying to flip him and defend the region and stuff for like that. Um, but I have to operate in a very free will way. Like I've got very strict codes of working with people. If they actually want to fuck me up, it, I have to allow it and I have to walk away because it's a trap. It's an ambush sort of thing. I've always known that. And then um, 2016, Andrew had his Living the Mystical Life Daily event where after that I went with this awesome elder um, who's out there. Her name is Mandy hyphen Lynn L Y double N Golden Eagle and she's holding down Turtle Island and uh, we went and cleared that. It was really amazing because on the drive after I was in America for seven days, I didn't practically eat or sleep. It was twenty eight hours flying there, it was thirty eight hours to come back. It was freaking epic. And um yeah, she she did a lot for me and I really wish I had the funds to be able to <laughs> help her I was just there's always security you don't know what's going to happen it just unfolds and stuff and yeah driving up Vancouver Island there was like 25 eagles and then there was this line of fire for like a formation and what I got this is the thing of the trust the force sort of stuff so what I got from those five eagles was I had to slap the fucking ground tell these bastards off no more, no more, no more when we did the ceremony. See, it feels like it's made up, but you go with instinct, all right? You can't read a book, you can't be mechanicalized. It's what you need to do in the moment, and that's the 10 years of healing, all right? That's where you're clear and you're aligned with Earth and all that sort of stuff. So we did that. It was epic. She hosted Andrew after. She helped me get back to Australia. Like The planes got booked just near, and she had to drive me two hours down to another airport and stuff, so I'm very grateful for her. What happened is she hosted Andrew on that island after his Nat died and stuff. And what, long story short, there was a falling out. Andrew told me one story that divided me from Mandy and Andrew was dividing her from everyone and trying to destroy her. They created Lift, Living the Mystical Life Daily together. But Andrew took it and put it on his website exactly what he did to me with Galactic History too. All right? So, and then he told me that... Um, he had to pay for all the stuff. Um, she owed him, she owed him like ten grand and all this sort of stuff. And this is the subtle, like giving away the perception of authority. What that did, it planted a seed of doubt in me that was opened, like the conscious Tetris, and divided us. All right, and that's what he's done to a lot of people. Keep me isolated. All right, and I, I couldn't allow myself to believe that someone would do that to me because I was got into making all the videos. Those videos that I made, like I made 200 and something releases, like close to 300, 150 public shows and 150 me members stuff. I would spend 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 hours a week. Just I'd work 13 out of the 14 days of a fortnight, um, send an invoice with the videos, but I would the agreement was $75 a video. It didn't matter if it if it cost me like 20, 30, 40 hours. I would do it, all right? 
and so a show might cost like him 220 to 300 US like because I'd put them all together and stuff so that was in Aussie it was $400 a week or so and I could live on that but each of those shows say the Arcturian shows um, I'm getting a lot of energy saying all this so it doesn't like it I don't give a fuck alright I'm imparting this and maybe I'm done you know what I mean um, so if like the Arcturian part 1 show had 15,000 views alright Maybe a thousand people would pay eight hundred dollars for a session, US. You think about how much money they were making, all right? So, but but my whole thing was because he imparted the key to me discovering what it was. I thought he brought me on because we were going to go like he was going to be. I was going to be the field operative, and he was going to be there as an ally. So when this gets done, all right. So I was willing to endure, to me, like, my mastery is, like, being in survival is a very pure existence, and it's very good, all right? And so I can live off not much, because what I was doing was imparting the energy, the potential in the, the recordings to bubble up the potential in people to activate their potential, which I'm beyond the money system. I'm about... Um, shortening people's journey and stuff like that so long story short i did all these shows recordings and stuff i never put my name on them i never did anything i allowed him to share what he wanted because it was his space and his perspectives and stuff and so we get to lionsgate 2019 and he's got no money and so i stick with him for 10 months to create Galactic History 2 that who knows how many people bought that but I got 3 grand US for it um, and I'd worked 10 months for free, I, I flipped his business um, and I believed him like I it was just really I could not believe that all the shit that had happened to other people could happen to me like what well, it was just shocking all right and then that's the trap i realized this is trying to take me out because i the way i am with money and the missions if anyone i care about is at risk they're more important than all the big shit because it's like the end of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade where that chick, she wants to go across the seal because she's got a vested interest in her own agenda. And I'm not agenda driven. Like if, like Martin Luther King is this saying, injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. All right. So vibration and frequency, if you do, if there's trouble and you're overlooking it for some vested interest and I'm very discerning on what I'm trying to get out of shit and if things aren't right then I disarm and I step back so he was in trouble I stuck with him created that and that I realised as I said in many things that um, they didn't add up and I had this friend I call her Silk Lightning do a session on him in November and and she's very, very perceptive, right? Because all my carrying and stuff, I was healing all, all, all along that time. I would get hit just after I wake up, and I'd get hit at three in the morning, uh, and it was just grinding me down, and I was very discombobulated and under extreme stress of not having any money and stuff and rationing my food and all that sort of stuff. I ask for help. It's very hard to ask for help and stuff. Some Some people out there like, offered me money and I haven't actually been in a position to repay them and that's why I did that Galactic History 2 video to honour someone that actually was very generous to me that was never nothing's ever been said about that so um, yeah I couldn't believe that was a setup for failure because I thought we were allies to get this done and I could not believe that what happened happened so 
I don't want to be too bitter or harsh or anything. It's just very fascinating. Um, and so in my last couple of years, there's a video out there. It's on my Discerny page if you want to go into the details. But it was my health. People don't understand me why I could let that go. But I did an amazing freaking thing. And he should not be in the rally anymore. And that had consequence on the world we're on now. The world we're in are because of that. And I'm not joking, right? So the money is like curse. You talk about like curse money from the Incas, like Pirates of the Caribbean. You imagine all the all the ancestors of the land that like what they feel like and all the Yeah, the battleground that's going on and stuff. But I'm gonna try and keep this pretty light. I also have this big variable, everyone has a space to make mistakes. Like like failure isn't a failure, it's a it's an appreciation that we have more awareness of what we previously realise. And I've been because of my thoroughness and my clearness and not being agenda driven by money or anything like that, even being able to let the whole world go for the well being of people, let my financial world go for that and stuff. Um that's key to it. And whoever says that oh, it's all meant to be and all that, no. We're reacting to failure, 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 interference and all this. And the whole Ashiana stuff is absolutely key to understanding and decoding why all these people do what they do because they're compromised. And it's the, the um, sympathetic resonance to the falsehood, all right? It's legit and it's in play and the unfamiliar people gravitate to the familiar even if it's, you know, your abuser. It's like an abusive relationship. Humanity have a um, a codependent relationship on their abusers and that's the terrifying thing that's stepping into your power. <laughs> All right. So I'll show you this image. I've offered this many times, it's getting dark and I'm going to finish off. And I've probably said what I need to say, just to make it very light and variables and the people in the region and seeding the potential of the reality by imparting this. But people governed by what they know versus being open to the, the unknown variables. So what I've done is I've imparted a few variables and a few... Um, components to decoding say me my transparency it's not that i'm worried about what people feel and stuff my transparency has always been about sharing this information and discerning who can actually read it i don't give a shit about sexual sort of stuff i'm all about the mission and what we're here to do and this really pivotal time of potential that we don't know because all these teachers have said a lot of crap but trying to obfuscate stuff, just like why I did so many shows, because I was trying to um, try to find the sweet spot of the truth, and if it was the truth, then we all should be spawning our self-realization and stuff, but that's the um, radio body sort of stuff, that a clip that I might share here and stuff, relative to all the other clips and that. Because it's been a radio overlay to us from this, from the Phantom Matrix and the Bureau to the operators that are in partnership with this to prevent us uh, returning Earth to our role and kicking the Phantom Matrix out once and for all and stuff. All right. So this is pretty long. I didn't want it to be too long. I've said a lot of stuff. Um, I've imparted what I wanted to sort of impart and see. It's a bit of a late last minute sort of video and stuff. I wanted you to actually be able to see and tune into me and discern me and stuff. But maybe go watch Avatar with the different eyes. <laughs> I might do it as well. I haven't done it for a while. Because obviously there's a new Avatar movie coming out soon. That's pretty interesting. Um, but yeah... We've all sort of got this sense of something more is going on and there's a connection to all this sort of stuff. But, yeah, just sit with this. I've challenged 
you here in a few ways. Maybe um, recalibrate with this codex that I'm offering about me and see what you get with me. I've, I've felt a lot through my body. I've been healing a lot of people through this and a bit of targeting and shit, but I, I haven't said anything here to sort of create harm or anything like that. I've invited a expanded contemplation of things and maybe steer us all back from a tangent sort of path to getting on, on course sort of thing. And I'm trying to um, seed into the multidimensional reality the potential that people might have potentially in those regions because it's going to be, I think it's going to be quite hard for me to get there um, if everyone keeps valuing the people that mess me up and then getting compromised and then trying to get into my world and ambush me with all the shit so um, I'll end it here and I'll, if I want to add more I'll add more and stuff um, but I thank you for your courage to be here on earth whatever variable it is um, don't be polarised about anything I say just take it as appreciation of how hard it is here on earth um, the scales of shit against this are epic but we are freaking even more epic. So, a big, massive, yippee you reality frackers. Well done. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your journey. And I really, honestly, hope you get a lot from this. Go do your, go engage your keyboard ninja and see what you get. And if you've had the recordings of Ashiana, uh, the, the decryption of all the pattern of what's gone on, See what you get with this. Might be very interesting. Might be interesting which other teachers out there suddenly um, start talking about this because I've seeded it once more. But thank you for being you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your journey. And we'll see you next time, guys. Lots of love. Andre out. When we do this grid work, we are here on a mission, we are here on a purpose. We, the purpose we are here to do is to bring back the Christos frequency as much as possible. We are here to assist in healing areas of the planetary grids that have been purposely and intentionally distorted and used and misused. Right now, we're in a very special place. We're in a very special place because this place, long ago, was called Ionia, this whole place was called Ionia. Ionia stretched all the way from up into the areas of France and Italy, all the way down through the island nations through here. The island, the, the civilization called the Ionian civilization was a massive pre-Atlantean civilization. It existed during Atlantis and before Atlantis. It was a civilization that was created by the, the uh, the root races and the cloister races of the angelic human 12 tribes. Tribe 5, the guardians of Stargate 5, which is located right under the Vatican in Rome, Italy. They were the ones who populated the Ionian nations. They were the guardians of Stargate 5 and all of its territories. They were here on the Christos realignment mission. They were here trying to help heal the planetary shields and bring back the D12 Christos imprint here. The Ionian people were the people that became the original Greek people. The Ionian people became a very mixed peoples because Ionia became a haven. The areas we're in right now and the areas that we'll see on this tour became a place of exile. Now, if we go back to the Atlantean period before the 9558 B flood, there were a few things that took place in history. We'll start with 25,500 BC. It was a period of time when races called the Anunnaki races invaded here, and they put up something called the Niberuan Dyadic Crystal Grid setup. They anchored it at Stonehenge in England, which is Stargate 11 area, and they began to progressively infiltrate this area, the planet, and put in crystalline technologies that work like microchips. 
They put in these crystalline technologies to get control of the planetary Templar, which is the planetary grid system. Now, that invasion began in 25,500 BC, but the Guardian races were still strong here, and they were able to squelch some of the outer level of the rebellion. So civilization continued where you had it polarizing. You had the ones working the anti-Christos agenda being directed by two different groups. One, what are called the Anunnaki races, and the other, what are called the Draconian races. In other workshops, we got into exactly who these people are, in which there's a whole bunch of different families in both of them. So I won't go into that again. If you want to know it, it's in, you know, some of the, it's in Voyager's book has a lot of that, and there's other books I have it in too. Now, at the 2226 BC, um, fall of the last stellar activation cycle where it stopped halfway through and we had a partial pole shift because it was stopped halfway through. Then we had 10,500 BC Luciferian conquest when more of the nasties came in and they put wormholes here which we really didn't need any more of and they're off the coast of Florida by the way <laughs> if anybody wants to know that's why the Bermuda Triangle does its thing. After that there was the 9,558 BC flood. The flood in the Bible, the great deluge, well, it was orchestrated. It was done on purpose. It was done as part of the Luciferian covenant. It was orchestrated. It had the use of spaceships to help it because we're not alone in this universe. The fallen angelics tend to drive spaceships, at least the ones in the lower densities do. So all of this stuff, ETs, the whole thing, all of it is part of the same story. And it, we need to begin to understand this. Part of the same story happens to do with our history as it's come up. Right now, we're sitting on a place there was a place where the Grail lines, we call them the Grail line humans, which were the original, the real humans, not the Leviathan hybrid humans, not the ones that were trying to take over the planet that didn't belong here, that were only invited here to try to help them, and then they tried to take over the hospital. But the real humans who carried the templates, the DNA templates of, of genuine humans, go with the planetary grids. They match the mathematical coding of the planetary grids. We were the ones who operated the Templar, because of that DNA connection to the planetary grids, we had the codes that could open and close the stargates on this planet. And anything that wasn't organic to this planet didn't have those codes, so it couldn't use the gates. That's why, since Atlantis, this race has been progressively infiltrated, and it has, there has been forced interbreeding that has taken place here. A certain of the Leviathan hybrid race strains tried to build a master takeover race that would have more and more of the codings that went with the planetary stargates. So they could, when this time came, have enough of the coding in their bodies to run the Templar the way they wanted it to. Now, we've gotten into, in some of the other workshops, what, what they're trying to do. It has to do with black holes and phantom matrix and pulling this planet into a black hole system. We have the science stuff on that, so I won't go into it in this workshop. But I want to talk about here, while we're here, a bit of the Ionian history. The Ionian people which were original, originally the, the Greek people and the Roman people. It was before the people that are known as Romans now came. They weren't the first people there. The first people were the 12 tribe, uh, what were they called? Iona II or something. I have, it's in the book, I have to remember. The tri tribe five were the, were the people that were settled here. Iona II Attila, I think. Iona II Attila? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I found it <laughs> in my brain. <laughs> All right, the originals were called the Iona to Attila. Now, yeah, Attila. And that's where you get the italic races and those kind of things. They were the original peoples here. They were part of a large group of people called the Angelic Human Twelve Tribes Races. There were 12 tribes with very specific names, each one of them assigned to be the guardians of one of 12 stargates on the planet. All right, they were guardians of Stargate 5. Now, what happened in Atlantis after the 10,500 B.C., um, Luciferian conquest, areas of Atlantis progressively got more invaded by the Leviathan races and the Grail Line humans were being killed. They were being executed, they were being um, hooked up to horrendous technologies to try to literally read their cellular memory to get the knowledge right out of their bodies and that kind of thing. There were horrible things being done to them. In order to preserve the race lines, because they were going to become extinct on the planet, which means the Leviathans would have taken over the planet completely, they broke up and moved away from the areas that they were originally supposed to be in to be the guardians of the stargates they were assigned to. Now, the people that ended up coming to Ionia were the people that were guardians of several stargates that were in Atlantis. One of them is Stargate 11. Now, in the other workshops we've given, we've talked about where Atlantis was. All right, we've talked about the fact that England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales right now are part of what was northern Atlantis that was called Lojas Atlantis. That's where Stargate 11 is. Down in the area of Bermuda, 
or, or yeah, the Bermuda Islands, where Stargate 3 is. That was an area called Nohasa, Atlantis. This was all a continent, once upon a time, that was in the, what's in the Atlantic right now. And down in the area of what's called Florida right now is a place that was called Brua, Atlantis, that had Stargate 2, which was the control gate for the rest of the gates on this planet. It was called the Gruol Point, or the Holy Grail, the Holy Gruol. That was the place that if you got control of that, you could control the other stargates on the planet from it. When things were getting bad after the Luciferian conquest in 10,500 BC, the races from other areas had run up to Stargate 11. They had crossed over and they were hiding. There was a whole cluster of them. They were up with the Keltex. The Keltex were one of the, the Grail Line races that were up there. The Druidex, which originally were from Bermuda, area, which was Stargate 3 area, ran up there. So everybody's hiding up in Lojas, and then they invaded Lojas. So everybody ran down, <laughs> right? It was like, where can you run it? They won't get you. The, all of the races that had begun, it started with Lemuria even before. The ones from Lemuria, when Lemuria sunk because it was invaded and there was a whole bunch of mess that went down. The gray lines from Lemuria, which were, um, gate, they were part of Gate 12 guardianship, because uh, what's called Q-Site 12 is over in, in what's now Kauai. They moved... They moved the remnants of the Mua, Lemurian races, over into Lojas, Atlantis. And then the one, when Lo Lower Atlantis was getting invaded, the, um, the good guys, the Grail Lions, were moved all the way up. So everybody stuck up in the area of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Then they started doing stuff with the, with the, with the climate, where we ended up with ice ages and things happening up like there. They were, that happened first. There was one around the 22, what was it, 24,000? 20, no, 22,000. Right after the 22,326 BC mess, a bunch of them had to come back down because they had ice. And then it started to thaw again because you can, you can make the ice caps melt or freeze depending on what you do with the crystal technologies that are in the grids. There are people that actually control our biosphere right now, and we don't even know it. But anyway, the people, the, the races, the Grail Line races that were trying to escape the progressive infiltration and invasion of the Leviathan force can, ended up in a little ball up in, in England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales area. And then they were invaded very fully during the Atlantean period by certain Anunnaki-based groups. And they ran and they spread out. But most of them came down to the next closest relatives, which were the ones that were hanging out and still had a stronghold at Stargate 5. So they came into Italy and they came into Greece. Well, they came into Italy first in those areas, but progressively the Leviathans moved down and chased them, and it chased them out into the islands. So they ended up, very many of them, holding the grids. They were able to hold the Greek islands for quite a while. They were in Cyprus. They were in Paxos. They were, they were, these little clusters were able to hold together and hold the grids. We get into... When we go to see the Minoan ruins, we'll talk a little bit about where they fit into all of this, because those cultures were originally started by the Grail Line races from Atlantis, who are an exodus from Atlantis. John Lilly once put it this way, there are no limits at all to the human mind whatsoever, except those we impose on ourselves because of our beliefs. And those limits are also beliefs to be transcended. And that's a view that suggests that the possibilities of human transformation are virtually infinite that we have no way of knowing the outer horizon of what it means to be human. And really, to understand all this, everything, you have to go very, very deep in, into uh, a study of uh, 
history, consciousness, neurophysiology, everything. You have to be you have to be the supreme eclectic type of uh, leaning, and you really have to be wanting to know who you are and, and what everything's about. And the thing that you'll find when you go to sacred sites, if you're very humble about it, is that you are on a personal journey and the sacred site will respond to you in a way that is appropriate only to you. The information is always what you are searching for. And it's the intent you give uh, that energy that defines whether it is used for right action or not. And it is inside these sacred spaces that you will be reminded that you are a god, that you are a bright star. So what you're trying to do is move through the course without ricocheting off walls or creating karma. You're trying to slide through things smoothly. How do you do that? It's called flowing. There's a technique that you can do that will allow you to touch some part of your inner being that has more knowledge than your conscious state does. <laughs>